Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Testing. I'm Ryan, and today we're going to be doing a charging test. We're going to be looking at the 0 to 100% charging curve for a Nissan Aria with the smaller 63 kilowatt hour battery. Now, we have already tested the larger battery in the Nissan Aria, so we know what that charging curve looks like, but we have not tested the smaller battery, so let's go ahead and see this charging session. Jumping in, and we start ramping up to see our maximum charging speed very quickly. It takes about 30 seconds to reach there, which is pretty darn good. We see at first it's at 123 kilowatts, and it's going to slowly work its way up. At this point, it's holding a constant amperage, right, right around 320 amps, which is pretty modest, but it's okay. And right now, as the battery is charging, voltage is increasing. Power is a function of uh, current times uh, voltage, so because we have the same current and an increasing voltage, we're seeing the charging power increase. We're now at about 17, 18%, and we're seeing 129 kilowatts. That's actually going to be our peak charging speed for this entire charging session. We're going to see it slowly start to taper a little bit uh, as we move our way through the 20% range. Now, I do want to comment 127, 129, 125 kilowatts, what it's doing right now. It's not a very good peak, and we just hit 30%, and we see that it dipped down again. Now we're doing only about 111 kilowatts. This, again, is not super great, but I think it's important to consider this vehicle and the type of competition that it has. I think a couple vehicles that are right up this, this car's alley, some great competition would be the Chevy Bolt, as well as the uh, Kona, as well as E-Nero. Both of those, or rather, all of those vehicles have batteries in the somewhere around 65-ish kilowatt hour range, and they have charging speeds somewhere around 55 to 75 kilowatts. So in that context, we can see the 130 kilowatts is actually a, a pretty decent step up. But that doesn't change the fact that this is not a super great charging vehicle. It takes just over 15 minutes for us to reach 50% state of charge. From here, we're just going to continue our taper down, though it actually holds a pretty decent curve up a little bit higher. We'll st we're still doing 90 kilowatts in the mid 50% range. This is pretty solid, especially when you consider that it's a relatively small 63 kilowatt hour battery. We're just about 20 minutes in, and we're reaching almost 60%, which is a pretty good uh, result. It's a pretty solid C rate, and I've explained this a few times before, but a C rate is how fast a battery charges in relation to the battery size itself. So, a C rate of 1 it means that a battery charges from 0 to 100% in 1 hour. For this 63 kilowatt hour battery, a 63 kilowatt charging speed would be 1C. 2C would mean the battery can charge from 0 to 100% in half an hour, so it would be double the charging speed. Instead of 63, it would be 126. And that is pretty close to the peak that we saw. So we saw a peak speed around 2C, which is not super impressive, but it's not terrible either. 25 minutes in here, and we're in the seven, we're right around 70%. And this is probably where you would likely unplug and start get going on your road trip if you were taking this on one. This car is rated for about 205 miles of range, so this should hopefully get you 150 miles at least. We have not done a range test on this, however, I, I don't know if this would actually be able to reach a full 200 miles. I think it'd be close, but wouldn't, wouldn't be the best range vehicle. 30 minutes in, we're at 76% and still just chugging along. We're doing 63 kilowatts, so like I said, that's 1C, which is actually pretty solid for this high up in the pack. Now that we're at 80% state of charge, this is where things really start to slow down. We're going to reach 60 kilowatts, and this is not very fast at all. It's still worthwhile to, to stick around if you really need it, and you're not going to be waiting here forever, which is kind of nice. But if you don't need to, you should definitely be moving on along your way if you're on a road trip trying to get to the next charger. 
As always, the best strategy for these road trips is to hop from charger to charger, only charging as much as you need to make it to the next charger. Now we're that at the tail end of this charging curve, I'm going to go ahead and speed it up again, just because I don't want to be here for the next 30 minutes explaining how slowly this charges. This is something that I typically do because, as always, most EVs charge slower once you get closer to the top of the pack. We're still doing 40 kilowatts at 93% state of charge, which is really quite impressive. This is blowing a lot of the other vehicles that I mentioned, like the E Nero, Kona, and Bolt, really out of the water. We're getting to 96% in 45 minutes, and it's still doing 23 kilowatts. This is pretty good. If you need to get somewhere and need to use the full battery, this is actually really nice because you're not going to be stuck here for an hour and a half, two and a half hours, or something like that. I have had plenty of range tests where I'm sticking around and it's just chugging along super slowly once you get above 80%. 99% happens in 53 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and speed it up again. It might sound a little curious for me to speed it up again, but it took another half hour for it to charge from 99 to 100%. It just took forever for this battery to top charge and balance the cells. And that concludes the actual charging, so let's go ahead and take a look at this charging curve, see what that looks like uh, kilowatts versus state of charge. I've got it pulled up on my computer and I'll show it on the screen as well. As you can see, remember we started out with a really quick ramp up, got up to our peak charging speed, well rather peak amps, within 30 seconds. And we ride that wave uh, for a while, up until we reach around 19% state of charge. Throughout that time, we're holding a steady amperage and slowly ramping up power. It's really not super significant. There's not a whole lot of difference between 123 versus 129 kilowatts, but it's kind of cool to see the voltage increasing there. However, once we get to 20%, we see that it actually starts to throttle itself back just a little. It's making sure that it's staying under 130 kilowatts for whatever reason, and then once we, re we reach 30% state of charge, it jumps off a little bit of a cliff. It drops down about 15 kilowatts, down to about 112 kilowatts, and then it's going to start a very, very steady ramp downwards. This is almost completely linear. Now there are some bumps here and there, but I think that's just <laughs> noise in the measurement that we have since uh, I'm not measuring things down to the second. So really just a straight linear curve down from about 112 kilowatts at 31% uh, till we get to 96% at 37 kilowatts. This is a interesting strategy and something that we have seen before. But the big benefit for this is if you need to do a deep charge in the pack, if you need to use all of the range on this relatively short range EV, you're not going to be stuck on the charger forever. It's going to be about 40 minutes, 45 minutes for you to get most of the battery charged. The downside here is things really, really fell off a cliff after 97%. This was really one of the worst top charging vehicles that I've tested. And I think that there might be a way to spin this as a positive. So for example, if you're out uh, going for a dinner, maybe you want to plug in your charge at, car to charge while you're eating. And generally speaking, but from the time you plug in to when you're done with the meal, it's going to be a lot longer than 45 minutes. And if you leave your car waiting there, you could get some idle fees. With this charging curve, you could hypothetically just leave it sitting on the charger uh, and you won't get the idle fees but this is a really far-fetched positive i i don't think that it's a, a real scenario it's also a little bit selfish to be stuck at 100 percent or 99 percent charging at two kilowatts for 30 minutes uh, so i would not recommend doing this uh, and if i were designing a vehicle i'm not sure that i would necessarily do that this is something that is somewhat necessary depending on how you design the battery. For batteries that have a large top buffer, that means that there's a lot of uh, actual battery that could hypothetically be used, but software limited, you're not allowed to charge above that. This will make sure that there's not too much of a, not too much of a buffer and you can charge at a decent speed all the way up to 100%. On the other hand, if you've got a vehicle with a very small top buffer, that means that you can use all of the available battery. 
The downside is that it takes forever for it to charge up. It takes a really long time to get that last couple percent and top balancing up there is also going to take forever as well. So it's a trade-off that some manufacturers seem to have made and it appears that, that this Nissan Aria with a smaller battery has a smaller, uh, a small top buffer. However, I don't have data to back this up. Now let's take a look at the Nissan Aria with the bigger battery and compare the smaller battery and bigger battery charging. We can see the bigger battery has a very similar peak. It peaks at 130 kilowatts compared to the 129 for the small battery. However, it holds this peak from 8% all the way till about 50% state of charge, so a much longer curve, though it does have a little part, uh, bit, the first 6% are at considerably lower speed, around 80 kilowatts. Regardless, this is a much stronger peak of the curve. It holds it for much longer. Furthermore, it's got a very good, relatively linear curve, moving from 50% up to about 96-ish percent. It's a relatively linear, flat, uh, steep slope downward, meaning that this is a pretty good charging curve. It has a lot of uh, area under the curve, meaning it should charge from, uh, should top charge relatively well. Everything that I have been saying about the small battery with good top charging, uh, being able to maximize uh, your range, uh, not spending forever at a charger if you need to stretch it, all of this is going to be holding true for the larger battery as well. In fact, even a little bit more so because it's holding more power for longer and higher speeds. Next, I'd like to take a look at a bunch of other crossovers and see how this compares with some of the other not-so-great charging crossovers. I've pulled up a few charging curves, and the first one I want to discuss is the Mustang Mach-E. This was actually a GT trim that we tested a while back, and its charging curve is remarkably similar to the uh, Nissan Aria with the smaller battery. They've got a very similar peak, and they've got a really similar looking curve as well. They both seem to taper around the same point at the same rate as well. So just kind of interesting to see how uh, they have a similar strategy there. Next, I'd move on to the Chevy Blazer EV, and this is actually going to be the same battery as the uh, uh, Equinox EV. This uh, is a little bit of a misleading charging curve and that you probably won't get to see this in real life. That's because this battery tends to overheat pretty considerably. However, like we do all of our tests, we try to show the maximum possible charging curve, and that's what we have here. And if you were to see this charging curve, it's pretty much better than the Nissan Aria up until about 80% state of charge, which, like I mentioned, makes sense. I said the Nissan Aria charges pretty well up above 80% state of charge, so this is a good example. Finally, I want to move on to one of my favorites. That's my <laughs> old Chevy Bolt. Uh, this is a car that I used to own. It wasn't an EUV, though that is the charging curve we're looking at. They should have identical charging curves. It, it had a peak of just about 55 kilowatts, which is really not impressive, and it starts tapering around 50% state of charge. So really a pretty poor charging curve. And you can see that the Nissan Aria is pretty much double the charging speed of this Bolt. Furthermore, the Nissan Aria has a 63 kilowatt hour battery compared to the 66 kilowatt hour battery in the Chevy Bolt. So same size battery pretty much, but twice the charging speed. So if any of you are familiar with road tripping with a Bolt, it's going to be a huge step up from there. However, these are some of the worst charging, uh, not so good charging uh, EV crossovers. I also want to show you some of the better charging crossovers. Let's take a look at that now. Here is that same chart with a few more EVs. I included some better charging EVs. The first one I usually like to include with crossovers is the Volkswagen ID4, and this was the all-wheel drive Pro S model. I think that this is a really good benchmark vehicle. It's not super great at charging, and it's not terrible either. But this is, uh, this is usually where I say something's solid. And we can see that the Nissan Aria with the 63 kilowatt hour battery is considerably slower across the entire charging curve compared to the Volkswagen ID4. This is unfortunate, but that's just the reality of this vehicle. Next, we can move on to the 2024 Kia EV6 GT. 
and this is a monster charging curve. It's super impressive, and it also charges really fast up above 80% as well, uh, perhaps even better than the Aria. And this is really a really impressive charging curve, does really quite well, and even though this vehicle has been out and had more or less the same charging curve since, what, 2021, uh, this is still pretty much class leading. And one more that I wanted to include was the new Porsche Macan EV. This has a great peak charging speed, uh, close to uh, 300 kilowatts, just about 291 kilowatts. And it has a really beefy curve, and it charges pretty well up until about 90%. So when we look at this in the big picture, yes, the Nissan Aria is better than some and matches a few vehicles, but if we look at the entire landscape of crossovers, it's not that great at charging. And this is really just the, the reality of the Nissan Aria. It's got okay range and only okay charging. It's not going to be a, a road trip monster. It's not going to be super great at that. You're not going to get from uh, LA to New York in record time or anything like that. However, it is absolutely adequate. People definitely road trip with vehicles that are worse at charging or less efficient, worse range than this. Plenty of people have road tripped with a Bolt, and this will be pretty much twice as fast as that. So I think that this is just the reality of it. It's a decent charging vehicle, but if you're actually going to be road tripping, this will be a, a, a slow vehicle. It'll hold you up, and it won't be the most enjoyable experience, most likely. You'll have to slow down, really take it from a, a much slower uh, perspective, and really just ride it out. Take a, take a different viewpoint for the whole road trip. Not be so much in a rush and try to just enjoy the trip if you can. But again, that's just general advice for riding with an EV, regardless of how well it charges. So that's pretty much all I have for you for this Nissan Aria. Too long didn't watch? It's okay. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments.